This is where Sound and Laban and his family call home, at least for the winter months. As the coldest days of the year have passed, it's time to move to another pasture. A tent, a couple of boilers, some food and cattle dung for fuel are all they need. Moving is a fact of life on the Qinghai Prairie in western China, where thousands of Tibetan herdsmen like Son and Lan still lead a traditional nomadic life. They move with the seasons to pasture their animals. Son and Lan's spring rangeland is about eight kilometers from their winter settlement. After a four-hour hike, they arrive. As the tent goes up, the fire is made, and their spring home is ready. Sonan Ladin has two daughters. Wang Bo Chu is 11 years old. Woman Ju is 9. The parents don't want the girls to follow the herds, but they have little choice. They worry about their daughter's education. Nothing can be done without knowledge. At first I didn't understand. I thought it's unnecessary to send girls to school because they only need to know how to herd livestock. But later I realized that even herding can't be done without learning. No matter how hard our life is, I'll let them study. Sona Ladin's family has grazed their herds on this prairie for generations. But he wants his daughters to see the outside world. But living in a remote, sparsely populated area makes it hard for children to go to school. A regular school, that is. If the nomads can move with the herds, why can't a school move with the nomads? This tent school has just arrived, traveling 10 kilometers. It's at the center of the new community of about 60 nomadic families. The small tent holds great hopes for the younger generation. We come here voluntarily. Though the conditions are tough, it still provides a study space for children. The kids need to learn Mandarin Chinese and English. This patch of pasture is mine. I'm glad to donate it to set up the school. Today is the first day of the new school. Guang Buzhou and Womo Jai set off early. The road ahead is long and tough, but they keep moving forward with determination. After an hour, they arrive. As the snow lets up, other classmates follow. 
The new school begins with the Tibetan language class. There are 12 students in all, from first grade to third. Usually, when one grade has classes, the others study on their own. But the teacher wants all the children to participate in the first class, so he has them review the most basic Tibetan words that everyone knows. The children are young, but they already have plans for the future. I want to study. I want to be a teacher. I want to study. I dream of being a doctor. Realizing their dreams will take a long time, but that doesn't stop them from having fun now. During the break, they play games with their teacher. The loser has to sing a song. The first tent primary school appeared on the Qinghai Prairie in the 1950s. A tent, a blackboard, and simple teaching aids make a school. Students can learn the basics of the Tibetan language, Mandarin Chinese, and mathematics. For many nomad families scattered far and wide, this is the only form of education. By the 1980s, they had reached their peak, and 10 schools go only as high as third grade. Then children have to go to faraway county boarding schools. The county's enrollment rate used to be 15 percent. After the 10s, it improved significantly. Still, the 10 schools have their weaknesses. Now, we are building more and more boarding schools in pasturing areas. Nomad kids can choose the school nearest their home. The county's primary school enrollment rate has reached 96 percent. This is the newly built Zhongtang boarding school. Two years ago, a tent school stood here. But now, students can study in big, bright classrooms. The boarding school is much better than the tent school. We can study and live here. They will am far from their parents. They won't worry about me. I like it here. The teachers are nice. The teachers and look after us. I'm very happy to be here. Both nomad children and their parents welcome the boarding schools. Here, the students can concentrate on their studies. Textbooks are free, and there's no tuition. The government is continuing to expand investment in schools in the remote western regions. As more and more boarding schools rise up on the grasslands, more nomad children are able to obtain a basic education. In September, this tent school will be replaced by a boarding school. At that time, Guang Bu and her sister will no longer walk an hour to school every day.